bigger. Okay, got it. Yes, wrong share. Present. Okay, there we go. So welcome everyone to Zoom Pro. For those of you who weren't at our prior one, my name is Julia Lanter. I'm with Exeter Public Library. And I always think it's good to start these things with um, my relationship with what I'm about to talk about. Um, I've been using Zoom Pro for about three years through COSLA um, T3 Train the Trainers. Um, and I've used it to collaborate with librarians, collaborate on ideas on how teens can use Zoom Pro. Um, and also I've used it to train um, just like I'm doing today um, through our um, programming. So for Zoom Pro, um, it's one thing we always have to get out, out of the way here is yes, Zoom Pro costs extra money. You can have different plans for different um, type of Zoom Pro accounts um, from anywhere from having enough to do an entire conference um, to having enough to uh, support up to 100 people. So lots of different varieties. And I highly recommend that before you get um, your Zoom Pro account that you contact Zoom and talk to one of their representatives and they can walk you through all of the price point models. So a few things to consider before you take the plunge to Zoom Pro. Um, when hosting a Zoom um, meeting, uh, you need to download um, your the most current version of any web browser. Um, they tend to like um, Gmail, uh, sorry, Google better um, than other ones, but they run most web browser versions. Um, but it is a pretty heavy um, piece of uh, machinery, so you want to make sure to have the most up-to-date web browsers. Um, I highly recommend password protecting any meetings you create. Um, and do not post a URL um, for a public meeting unless you want to deal with having what we all have heard of as Zoom bombers. So people coming in who you might not want saying things that might be inappropriate or even showing things. Oh, how fun. Uh, yes, uh, Exeter ourselves, we no longer use Zoom for our town because someone mooned <laughs> our um, town selectmen. So things to think about about how you share the entrance into Zoom. Um, you can generate a meeting ID with a personal meeting ID um, so that way you can know who's getting in and who might be causing a ruckus. You can lock a meeting so after people join you can say oh no one can leave until I'm ready for them to leave. Might be a little maniacal on that one. I could see maybe for an SAT prep for teens but I've not really used that one myself. Um, under manage participants, you can mute all, which I highly recommend. If you guys have been to any um, state library events, you will know what I'm talking there. Um, under manage participants, um, use mute all and turn off video for all par um, participants. Um, under screen share, choose only host so you can share your screen. Um, and don't record until you ask people if they're willing to recall. Cord and basically, um, I'm going to just le share these slides later. But basically, you want to turn on the waiting room, turn off join before host, so you can see who's there before um, they all arrive. Um, you can remove participant to rejoin. Uh, you can annotate, you can have private chats on or off, uh, virtual background on or off, and um, for education or enterprise Zoom accounts, um, you can also um, have an authorized join option. So when participating in Zoom, really important, turn off the video and audio by default, and that way letting people join at their own time, um, and that way you don't have 30 people talking all at once when you first enter. Um, I think common practice is to stay mute, muted when you're not speaking. Um, and under preferences, you can also give them the option to have a virtual background if perhaps they're sitting in an area that is not appropriate. I don't know about you guys. I might have a few posters in my background I don't want everyone to see. Um, so that way I can cover it with a virtual background. And be aware that all your chats um, can be read by the house, a host, both public and pri um, private. Um, and here's a few information for general Zoom best practices. Um, you know, lock your meetings. Um, again, uh, 
If you need to screen share, make sure that they have permission before you do that. Um, have your option to turn off allow participants to unmute. Um, and a number of settings found in settings have like, there's thousands of things that you can do for combination. So I recommend going in settings and just reading through each one. Um, so basically today, I threw up those basic slides just to go through general practices, but what the meat and potatoes of today, I'm gonna to talk about three things um, in advanced settings. Um, when you log into your pro account, you're just gonna log in, get a username and password. You're gonna schedule a meeting. You're gonna create the uh, meeting information, the time, the place, the subject matter. You're gonna give it a title. Um, I'm gonna highly recommend you, you use a password. Um, so that makes it a little more secure. And then um, you're going to um, have the meeting scheduled. So in the settings, um, you, there are three things that are kind of bonuses with, with uh, Zoom Pro, and that's the meat and potatoes of why I'm talking today and why I think we can use Zoom Pro for Teams. Um, there's polling and whiteboard and breakout rooms. So that's what we're really focusing on for teens today. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is polling. So polling is when you have a meeting scheduled, you can actually create a poll. And how you're gonna do that is when you go into meetings, you go into settings and tap the poll option, which is right by that gray arrow. Um, you title the poll. Um, and then you give it their options for choice. For example, I'm creating a poll that says, will you use polls at your library? And you can have a single choice, a multiple choice. You have different answers. You can have um, four options, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, however you wanna format them. For this one, I just want a yes or a no. So I said, um, do you wanna use polls at your library? Yes, statistics are so much fun or no boo math. So once you've created your polls, you can pull them up in your general Zoom um, menu bar, which is the black bar that you see right underneath, right at the top of the screen. Um, it looks like uh, polls is right in the middle and you click on that to actually access that poll that you create. You can create polls on the fly during a meeting but I highly recommend, especially if you're the only one running a Zoom meeting, that you're gonna wanna create your polls before that. Um, one th thing I love using polls for is when we're going to meet next, <laughs> I'll make a poll for meeting times that I'm available, throw it up there at the end of the meeting, and then we have right there in real time the, the decision process happening. Um, for whiteboard, this is another fun Zoom Pro Extra. Um, whiteboard is another option that you can access from your Zoom Pro menu, that black bar that, that appears. If you're an Apple user, it's typically on the top of your screen. If you're a uh, Mac, uh, sorry, if you're a PC user, it's gonna be on the bottom of your screen. So for the whiteboard, you're going to uh, click whiteboard under screen share. So it's the little green lo logo, and then you have a nice whiteboard that shows up where all the participants on your Zoom can write on this. Um, for teens, I was thinking, uh, especially if the teens are not coming into the building, I know that our teens love passive programming, like having whiteboards that they can draw on. So maybe that's something you could have a time period where you have that available for teens to say hi to each other, do some graffiti with your supervision, of course. Um, but it's a fun way they can draw, they can uh, add text boxes, erase, they can upload um, stickers and, and images on the whiteboard. So a great way also if you're perhaps doing a book group through Zoom, I heard a few people were doing Zoom groups with teens. So this is another way that all the teens can get on and, and use their creativity, um, maybe to draw a picture of one of the characters or um, a map of what the country would look like or the room. Uh, the, the uses really here are, are endless and creative. 
Um, so breakout rooms is the last bit I'm going to talk for Zoom Pro accounts. Um, so for this, it's a little different. The breakout rooms you have to create before you go into Zoom and run your meetings. So you're going to go into account management, account settings to get to the breakout room menu. And for anyone who is going, she is going really fast and I'm not reading all of these slides. Kat has them, we're gonna make them um, available to everyone. But the general thing is you go into account management, you're going to click on assign rooms option. And that's going to whoop, get you to create breakout room options. Um, you can create as many rooms as you want. You can assign participants. I can see myself using that for um, a book group where I have three people where I know like, oh, he tends to get off topic. She's good at keeping people on. I want those two on the same same group. So we can um, manually create those groups or you can have them just automatically throw everyone in groups. Um, there is no limit in the amount of breakout rooms you can create. So um, you can even have people go into individual breakout rooms, think for themselves and then come back together as the group. So when you are doing breakout rooms, oops, sorry, you um, can curate your room to join meetings and set a timer. So say you want kids to talk for 10 minutes on, we were just talking about To Kill a Mockingbird. So let's talk for 10 minutes on racism and To Kill a Mockingbird and how things have or have not changed since the writing of the book. So then you would click um, how long you would want that to go on. Um, what's nice is there's a warning of a couple of seconds. You can do a minute before or 10 seconds before. You can actually give them a countdown before the break, the breakout room closes. So that gives them a little time to go, oh, we need to wrap things up. And this is all automatically done so you don't have to really worry about managing the separate groups. Um, other things to manage, you can title the breakout rooms. For, you might want to do maybe two in a group. So maybe you'll have one set that says discussion on racism for mocking, uh, to kill a mockingbird. And maybe one will be discussion of Atticus. So that way you can select which breakout room when. And again, you can customize those separate rooms as well. Um, so that's the gist of the pro options for, um, for Zoom Pro that I think for teens um, are really applicable. One thing that I wanted to just point out for everyone for resources, um, Zoom is really, really awesome. They've really helped out during COVID-19. They have a great COVID-19 specific um, uh, information about how to work from home, how to educate using Zoom. So I highly recommend people to, to use that. Um, I used all three of those, uh, all three resources, the um, breakout rooms, whiteboards, and um, everything. I got information from this link. So if you want to learn more. And there's just some great online information about security and Zoom. I know that's a big concern for us, especially considering um, COPA. Um, so definitely read through those. And again, I'll be sure that um, we have that shared with you um, at, at the end of all these discussions so Kat can share them with you. And I think that is it from me. Uh, do we have any questions? I think we have five minutes to spare. Julia, I'm wondering in the breakout rooms, um, mm -hmm. there, there's no way to sort of moderate what's happening Exactly. That is okay. You can't. You as a you as the uh, moderator of the Zoom can go into any breakout room at any time, and I highly recommend you do that. Um, they give you um, say you broke up into five different rooms. They give you links to all five of those rooms for you to pop in. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that was one concern we had about just like making sure people were being productive or nothing terrible was happening. Um, yep. And I just wanted to say that um, we played, Andrew and I played Pictionary with our tab kids using the whiteboard and that was a oh, lot nice. of fun. 
Oh, great idea. Does anyone else, has anyone else used Zoom Pro or any, any of these features to success with teens they want to share? Um, one thing I'll say is I do my D&D group there. Um, and what I really like about this um, platform, the pro platform as well, is you can mute everybody except for the person who's like swinging the sword in Dungeons and Dragons, if you will. So that was super helpful when they were all talking over each other. You can like selectively mute everybody except for the person. That's probably available in basic as well, but it's a really good thing to know. I also recommend, and, and maybe Andrew and Kat, since you've used this as well, can can talk about their experiences. I think something that we all should do when using any sort of meeting platform, like GoToMeeting, like Zoom, is at the very tip of top of the, the meeting, discuss common etiquette and agreed agreements, we call them. So, you know, saying, okay, let's all agree to mute unless you're talking to um, step forward, step back. So if you've talked a lot, make sure you step back to let other people speak who need to speak. Um, I think that's one of the things that we're all adjusting to, to communicating on this format and it's easy to step over people. So I think agreements are a really important thing, especially if you're starting to do teen book groups, you wanna guide the teen's behaviors but let them come up with the rules. Maybe you have have like a guide that you can show them examples of, but let them come up with their own rules. Any other questions? All right. Great, thanks Julia. Um, so, we are going to take another 10. Um, next up is a Flipgrid presentation from the one and only Julia Lanter. Um, so in these next 10 minutes, feel free to uh, take a break. Or if you wanna hang out and chat, we can sort of use this as a networking opportunity too um, while we're all here, so no pressure. But if anyone wants to share books they've been reading, programs they've been offering, um, go for it. I will hang out.